Hi, this is Henrik Linval, and joining me here today are Kelly Colnan and Humanji Chattery. We are here to present the disc and washer method. We included the happy face smiley because we think you're going to have a lot of fun with this presentation. The disc method is used to find the volume of a solid of revolution, the end result of revolving a region about a line. The simplest solid of revolution defined is the disc, so we'll begin with that. When you are presented the problem, draw a picture, if you can, as we did here, where you graph the equations and the bounds. In this case, the line y equals 1 half x to the 1 half, the line x equals 6, and our axis of revolution, the line y equals 0, right here. Next, determine the region that is being rotated. To do so, identify the area enclosed by the equations and the bounds, which you can see is right here. After you have identified the area, it's a good idea to shade it in so you don't have to look for it later. However, we did not do that in this problem to keep it neat. Next, determine whether the axis of revolution, aka the line you are revolving the region around, is horizontal or vertical. In this case, it's horizontal, the line y equals 0, meaning that the integral will be in terms of x. We will get to the vertical case in the next slide. Now that you know that your integral will be in terms of x, you can set up your equation. The volume of the solid, right here, volume of the solid, equals pi times the integral from a to b, r squared dx. r, right there in the first line, is the distance of the graph from the axis of revolution. In this case, r is equal to 1 half x to the 1 half or 1 half times the square root of x. Now, square r because the integral asks for r squared, not r. Not squaring r is a common mistake, so stay on your toes. Next, you must determine what your limits of integration are. In other words, find out what a and b are equal to. If the integral is in terms of y, the limits must also be in terms of y. The opposite also holds true for integrals in terms of x. Here, our limits are x equals 0 and x equals 6, because those are the bounds of the shaded region. Now solve the integral and evaluate it from the range 0 to 6, making sure that you take the top limit of integration first, and then subtract by the bottom limit of integration, as we did here. Then you will find your volume of the solid to be 9 halves pi. Moving on to the next example, we once again draw a picture where we graph the equations and the bounds given. We shade in the area that is going to be rotated and identify the axis of revolution. Here we graphed y equals x squared, y equals 6, and x equals 0 to give us this region which we shaded in, or rather we highlighted, and then we identify the axis of revolution as the y-axis. Since the axis of revolution is vertical, both the integral and the limits of integration will need to be in terms of y. Since the equation given to us is y equals x squared, we need to get x by itself. So we take the square root of both sides to give us x is equal to the square root of y. And since r is the distance from the axis of revolution, it is thus equal to the square root of y. Square r and then to determine our limits of integration. We find the limits the same way as in example 1, except now you take the y-coordinate instead of the x-coordinate. In this case, it's from y equals 0 to y equals 6. Now solve the integral and evaluate from the range 0 to 6, as we do here. Then multiply by pi, and voila! You have this volume of the solid of revolution. Remember, to always multiply by pi, because not multiplying by pi is a very common mistake. Hey, this is Himanchi here to demonstrate how to solve a washer method problem. Washer method is similar to disk method, except that the area being rotated does not touch the axis of rotation. This creates an empty space in the center of the solid. Let's look at example 3. Find the volume of the solid generated by rotating the area bounded by y equals x squared plus 2, y equals 1, x equals negative 2, and x equals 2. 
The equation for washing method is volume equals pi times integral from a to b of big R squared minus little r squared dx. a and b are the bounds of the area being rotated, but big R is a function furthest from the axis of rotation, and little r is a function closest to the axis of rotation. Big R squared minus little r squared gives the volume of the washer at a given point. So we integrate this to include all points bounded by the graph of big R and little r, with the intersecting points serving as our limits of integration. By looking at the graph of the equations, we can clearly see that y equals x squared plus 2 is above the equation y equals 1, and the equation x equals 2 and x equals negative 2 serve as our bounds. This means that we can set big R to y equals x squared plus 2 and little r to y equals 1, and the integral from a to b to the integral from negative 2 to 2. Now we need to square the r's to get the r squareds. By squaring big R, we get x squared plus 2 squared, and by squaring little r, we get 1. We plug in the r's into the equation and plug in the a and b values into the integral. This will give us volume equals pi times the integral from negative 2 to 2 of x squared plus 2 squared minus 1 dx. From here, we can either simplify the equation and solve the integral by hand, which will give us volume equals 692 pi over 15, or you can simply plug it into your calculator to get v equals 144.932. Congratulations, you have solved a washing method problem. Moving on to our second washer example, where we'll be finding the volume of the solid generated when we revolve the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals 1 fifth x cubed and y equals x about the line x equals 3. This problem is tricky because we have to split up the graph into two separate sections and set up two integrals. I've labeled the sections 1 and 2 so we don't mix them up. We're going to start by finding the little and big r's of section 2. To find big r2, we must solve for x in the equation y equals 1 fifth x cubed and add 3. To find little r2, we must solve for x in the equation y equals x, which is simply y, and subtract it from 3. So in section 2, our big R is 3 plus the cubed root of 5y, and our little r is 3 minus y. Now we must do the same thing for section 1. To find big R, we solve for x in the equation y equals x again, and subtract that from 3. Then from little r, we solve for x in the equation y equals 1 fifth x cubed and add it to 3. This gives us big R1 equals 3 minus y and little r1 equals 3 plus the cubed root of 5y. Now that we have all of our r's, we must find the limits of integration. To do so, we will find the intersection points. Plug the given equations into your graphing calculator, then the intersection points will be your bounds. The bounds of section 2 go from negative 2.236 to 0. The bounds of section 1 will go from 0 to 2.236. Now that we have our bounds and r's, we set up our integrals. We will be adding the integral of section 2 to the integral of section 1. So volume equals pi times integral from negative 2.236 to 0 of big R squared minus little r squared plus pi times the integral from 0 to 2.236 of big R squared minus little r squared. Be sure not to mix up the r's and make sure you use the respective ones in each integral. Now, go to Math 9 on your calculator, plug in your r's, and the volume will come out to be 160.099. Now, I have the pleasure, pleasure to introduce H Money and H Money Number 2, a sensational rap duo who is taking Eastern Europe by storm. H Money! H Money 2! Calculus! Calculus! Henrik and Manchu in the house. Learning calculus leaves us without a spouse. So we dove into this project expecting some respect. First read you'll give it info, then draw it in your own window. Don't mess it up with your algebra skill, or else your attempt will make lead for the ill. Find the region that is being rotated, verify the bounds and that it's shaded. What are you rotating that region about? Go back and check it out. If the line is y equals a value, keep your formulas in terms of x. But, but... Please don't argue. 
if it's x equals a value, your formulas will do the contrary. In terms of y, we'll keep us married. Next, it's time for the integral. Not difficult unless you're dull. So listen up, insert a pi before your integral. Outer curve equals big R. Inner curve equals little r. I hope that wasn't too bizarre. Big R squared minus little r squared. Now the inside is prepared. Find the two limits of integration by the points of intersection. If non-existent, take the given bounds from the problem, and then you are done. Careful! Make sure the limits match what's inside, x with x and y with y. To find the volume, solve the integral, and boom! <clears throat> Evaluate from the range a to b, top limit minus bottom limit, and you're free. That was easy, don't you agree? Washer method is the way to go. It's like the disk method, but with the O. o. Remember this equation, or you're a fool. Volume is equal to the pi times the integral from a to b r squared minus little r squared. Knowing this makes you really cool, as evidenced by the pretty lady. Not a tool.